another demo from my PFSense. This time I'm going to take the straight up firewall logs. I'm not going to do the uh, PF blocker. I've gone in, I've seen what they look like. Here's a great example of uh, logs that are really quite tricky. These look pretty straightforward. I've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, six fields to work with, right? All right, cool. If I go look at the documentation, it tells me that they're located in var log filter. So if I come in here, let's just go run my inputs.conf. And we're going to see that I've added the stanza, var log filter log. I'm pulling those in. I'm going to call it source type filter. Um, I actually don't like that field. I'm going to change it. Nothing wrong with that. I'm going to go pfSense firewall. Control X. Yep. And now I just need to restart Splunk. Restart Splunk. It'll, it'll come back. When it does, it'll start sending off to my Cribble instance. So the first thing we want to do is wait for this thing to come back, which won't take very long. Universal forwarders are pretty quick. It's up. All right, I'm going to come in here. I, this log actually sends pretty quickly, so I can just go sample data. I'm going to capture data right off the line. And the index is pfSense. Source type equals pfSense. Firewall. So it's going to be looking for those. If I hit capture, hopefully I'll get some logs coming across. And boom, we're in, we're in luck. We're in, so I don't have to go export those like I did in my previous video. Uh, really easy. I'm going to save as a sample file. I'm going to call this pfSense firewall. And I just want to show you expiration 24 hours. When you do things like this, there's an expiration date. It'll just, they'll just erase this sample file off after so long. There's no reason to hold on to this. It wants to keep your system nice and clean. I encourage not to keep a very long time. You don't have to have them erased. I like them coming off. All right, so I hit save. I'm now going to be looking for my PFSense firewall. Sample data, PFSense firewall log. And let's go put this on pipelines. And I'm going to go grab my pipeline, my PFSense block. This is my sample place. First thing we're going to do, we don't need this because they're already coming through. So we don't need to put that on. We can turn that off. If I had to go grab the raw logs and make that uh, drop them in, I would need a host and an index source. But we can already see that's already being created. So we're good there. So next fill, so we can go, if we look at this, Next thing I did was parse. And in my previous, this one actually had really good, um, the, let's see, I think I've got the wrong parser. Parser here. Nope, oh, they're both the same parser. All right, parser here. Yep, all right, this is the parser I built, pre-built it, I've already gone through this. I did not find nearly as much documentation. You look at your PFSense sensor and you go, oh, this should be pretty easy. I wouldn't even look up documentation for that. I mean, how how hard could that be? Well, if I look at the logs, uh, there's a whole lot more fields to that. I went and looked up the uh, documentation here. Not a whole lot of help. They pretty much just mentioned what you see from the GUI. Uh, probably there's another place that you can get up, but here you can see all of those logs. And so if I click this, I can actually get some of the more common rules. But anyway, let's just say I can't find all these things. And so this is where I like my garbage fields. I have garbage fields I put in there, and the point of the garbage fields is to be able to remove all the garbage fields at the end. I can just go garbage garbage star and that'll take care of everything that was garbage one two three four five etc and so I only have to write one re removal and they all go away but the concept is I don't know what I know that um, so let's go ahead and we'll turn this thing on let's see what it looks like when I run this
it pulled A out, but B came back blank because there's nothing there. C came back blank. And I never do get a B or a C. It never seems to fill anything there. Those are always blank. I don't know what they are. So I'm just going to leave them as that. Um, firewall rule, I figured that out. I figured out the interface, the rule type, the action direction, IP version. And then after I get through the IP version, I'm not sure what these are. They're hex or something, or I don't know. So I put garbage and garbage one, garbage two, garbage three, garbage four, all the way till I got pretty much to protocol version, which was one, and then protocol UDP. Then I don't know what it is, and I don't know what it is. I, I mean, so I just went through protocol version protocol, and I wrote out what I knew and what I didn't, I got rid of. I mean, I just called them. And so you could go, I don't need B and C. So then you have to write them all out like this, or you can follow the example like I did garbage one, two, three, and I can go garbage star, and it's gonna well, it's gonna take everything with a number of garbage and just go away. And so there those are all gone. Just that quickly I've got them sorted. So if you don't know what the fields are and you don't want to keep them in there, you can give them some other name. You can just give them some arbitrary field, whatever you want to do. And Kerbal doesn't care. It'll it'll work with whatever you want to do. Now if we go look at our eval, I needed I have an index here, a source type source. Those aren't necessary, but I want to get these back to. Uh, um, I, I put them in there so I can, I'm in control, but you don't need to have them in there. Uh, but this source IP and destination IP, if we go to our edit objects, we will remember that. Network traffic has a source and a source and a dest. We don't have that filled. So we're going to create our own source and I make a source IP. Dest becomes dest IP. And we need an app and a vendor product. If I turn this on, we'll get vendor product and app up here, vendor product down here. And we can see that source type changed. And I don't want the source type to change, so I'm going to change it here. Remember, I originally had source type filter, and then I changed the source type uh, um, firewall. That would have overwritten what the inputs had done. I don't want it to overwrite it, so I'm going to take it out. And now source type goes back to pfSense firewall. Um, we're going to then, I don't like the way this is written, so we're going to serialize. And so let's go ahead. I don't want source to go in, I don't want host to go in, I want index to go in, and I want to keep everything else. So if I do that and I hit activate and I hit save, these logs are now in key value pairs. And then when it goes over to Splunk, It'll be coming as key values. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to add those to my giant pipeline. And you can see that here I have the log fil the filter.log. And if you if you meet those, you're going to go and we'll put those things in. And then same thing we just did before. So we do our eval. Let's take source type, get that out of there. Save. And then we serialize, and all is well. Let's, uh, I definitely want to put it. Yeah, I'm okay with all those here. I use this serialize to take care of everything that's coming down this path. I'm good with that. Okay, and just like that, I should have those logs coming in. I know I went a lot faster on this, but I'm hoping by seeing a second example of how to take a log, send it to Splunk, uh, send it to Cribble, let Cribble parse it, modify it, rename it, send it back to Splunk. You can. Uh, I'm hoping that a second example helps solidify how powerful uh, Cribble is. You can do this stuff so quickly with Cribble. And watch for my next video that's coming out. I will be taking these logs and fitting them into a data model. They're already fit, but now utilizing that data model to fill out dashboards that leverage data models. And that's really helpful. I hope this was I hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk ninja. Um, please, 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 I can't say it enough. Uh, like the channel, subscribe if you haven't already. Those things help amplify the signal. When people search for the videos, search for help, 
it, people liking and watching and subscribing is what makes these things pop up on the YouTube on your YouTube searches. Um, if you want to share this with others, that's the best way to do it. Like and subscribe. And again, if you have any questions, put down put them down the bottom. If you have any requests for videos or you want me to clarify on something, please put down comments. I respond to them. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, hope to hear you. Hope to see you back uh, at another time.